Welcome to Master Math. Here's a couple of tips to help you get the most out of these lessons. First of all, they're free. So you can watch it as many times as you need to understand the concept. Secondly, if I cover something and it's confusing to you still, hit your back button and look at it again. And third, when we come to a you try it problem, hit your pause key, try the problem on paper and pencil, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you enjoy yourself. You know, it wasn't that many years ago. Well, it was quite a few years ago. But you used to be able to get by with just customary U.S. measurement systems. I mean, if you understood feet and miles and gallons and ounces, you were in pretty good shape. But the world's gotten smaller, and we can't do that anymore. Most of the world uses a metric system, and we're going to have to learn to convert between metric and customary and customary and metric to get by in this world. Why, here in this picture, they're showing a lot of people that need to convert feet into meters. Well, fortunately, most of you are not going to have to memorize all these conversion factors because in most states, they give you a reference sheet that gives you conversion factors. What you're looking at is a portion of the Florida Comprehensive Assessment Test Reference Sheet, or FCAT Reference Sheet. And you can download a copy of the FCAT Reference Sheet from MasterMath.info. But I'm going to include at least this portion on all the slides, so you won't have to memorize the conversion factors. You're just going to have to understand how to read them. And they're not that hard. For instance, it says right there that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. And over here it says one pound equals 0.454 kilograms. And up here it says one cup equals 0.24 liters. So if you had two cups you'd have two times 0.24 liters or 4.8 liters. Over here we've got one meter equals 3.28 feet and you'll notice that up here we're going from US customary to metric and down here we're going from metric to US customary. And you're gonna see it's pretty easy to use this for instance, let's say we had six miles and we needed to know how many kilometers it, it equaled. Well, we go down to our chart and we're trying to convert miles to kilometers. So it's customary to metric. And I go, oops, there I see it. One mile equals 1.61 kilometers. So let's write that. One mile equals 1.61 kilometers. But I don't want to know what one mile equals. I want to know what six miles equals. So I got to take that one mile and multiply it by 6 to get it to equal 6 miles. But if I'm going to multiply the left side of the equation by 6, I better multiply the right side of the equation by 6 or it'll no longer be an equation. It'll be something that's unequal. So, I multiply 6 times 1 mile and that equals 6 times 1.61 kilometers. And then I work out that math and I got 6 miles equals 6 times 1.61 or 9.66 kilometers. 6 miles equals 9.66 kilometers. How about this one? Which is greater? 12 ounces or 300 grams? Well, we're comparing apples to oranges and we need to compare apples to apples. So we either need to convert our 12 ounces into grams or we could convert our 300 grams into ounces. Well, let's go ounces to grams. And if I'm going to go ounces to grams, that's customary to metric, so it's going to be in the top portion of this. I got one ounce equals 28.35 grams. So one ounce equals 28.35 grams. But I don't want one ounce, I want 12 ounces. So I got to multiply both sides of the equation by 12. And when I do that, 12 times 1 equals 12 ounces, and 12 times 28.35 equals 340.1.2 grams. So, 
12 ounces equals 340.2 grams. 340.2 grams is greater than 300 grams. So 12 ounces is greater than 300 grams. Which is faster, a cheetah which can reach speeds of 70 miles per hour or an antelope that can run as fast as 98 kilometers per hour? Well, in order to compare these, I got to either change my miles to kilometers or my kilometers to miles. Let's go with the kilometers and change them into miles. I can see down here that um, a kilometer equals 0.62 miles. A kilometer equals 0.62 miles. But I want 98 kilometers, so I got to multiply both sides of the equation by 98 and I end up with 98 kilometers equals 98 times 0.62 miles or 60.76 miles. There's another way we could do this problem that's pretty elegant and some of you may find it confusing and if so just go back and use the other method but for others of you I think you may find this a little bit easier to do and a little bit more uh, powerful tool. We know that 0.62 miles equals a kilometer. It says that right down there. It says one kilometer equals 0.62 miles, but if one kilometer equals 0.62 miles, then 0.62 miles equals one kilometer. And I can rewrite that 0.62 miles equals one kilometer as 0.62 miles per one kilometer. For each kilometer there is 0.62 miles. And, and this equals one because this equals this. So I could put one kilometer, I could replace that 0.62 with one kilometer and I have one kilometer over one kilometer and anything divided by itself is one. So 0.62 miles over one kilometer just equals one. Now, I know that the antelope runs 98 kilometers per hour. So I'm going to put that down there. 98 kilometers per one hour. And then I'm going to multiply that times this ratio right here, the conversion factor for miles to kilometers, 0.62 miles per one kilometer. And I was careful to, when I set this up to make sure I had kilometers on the bottom over here and kilometers on the top over here because I want them to cancel each other out, which they do. And you see, I'm multiplying by 0.62 miles per one kilometer, but that equals one. So if I multiply this by one, it's still 98 kilometers per one hour. Now, the kilometers cancel each other out, and when I combine this expression, I've got 98, that's not there anymore, times 0.62 miles, so 98 times 0.62 miles, and at the bottom, my kilometers were gone, I got one times one hour, which is one hour. Now I got 98 times 0.62 miles which equals 60.76 miles per one hour. 60.76 miles per hour. So again, the cheat is faster. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Six liters equals how many gallons? Well, let's find the conversion factor. And we're going from liters to gallons. That's from metric to customary. So we're going to be down here in the metric to customary section. And I can see over here that one liter equals 0.264 gallons. One liter equals 0 0.264 gallons. But I want six liters. So I got to multiply that one liter by six. And if I multiply the left by 6, I got to multiply the right by 6. So 6 liters equals 6 times 0.264 gallons, or 1.584 gallons. Who's taller? Frida is 61 inches tall, and Pieter is 151 centimeters tall. Well, we're comparing apples to oranges, and we can't do that. So let's convert our inches to centimeters. And you can see 
in the conversion sheet up here that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. But I want 61 inches. So I got to multiply 61 times one inch to get 61 inches. And if I multiply the left of the equation by 61, I got to multiply the right of the equation by 61. So I got 61 times 2.54 which equals 154.94 centimeters. So Frida is 155 centimeters, and Pietro is only 151 centimeters. Frida is a little bit taller. This is a tough one, and if you didn't get it, listen to me real closely and then maybe you can go back and try this one again because if you understand this you can you've really mastered the uh, lesson today we've got two cars one gets 37 miles per gallon and the other gets 10 kilometers per liter in the first case we've got customary over customary miles over gallons miles per gallon in the second case we've got metric over metric kilometers per liter or kilometers over liter. Well, bear with me and follow me through this one and I think you may understand it. We know that car A gets 37 miles per one gallon of gas. And we've got two things to convert. We've got miles that we want to convert to kilometers and we've got gallons that we want to convert to liters. So let's work on the miles first. What's our conversion factor for miles to kilometers? Well, it's one mile per 1.61 kilometers. Now, I want to have my miles on the bottom of this equation, so my miles cancel out my miles. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to write it this way, 1.61 kilometers per one mile. We know that that's true. 1.61 kilometers equals one mile. Now I got a gallon to convert, and the gallon's on the bottom of this uh, uh, fraction, so I'm going to want it on the top of this fraction. And what's my conversion factor? Well, one gallon equals 3.785 liters. So I've got one gallon per 3.785 liters. Now you remember that this equals 1 because 1.61 kilometers equals 1 mile. So I got something over something that equals it, that's 1. And this is also 1. So if I multiply this times this, I'm multiplying it by 1 and I haven't changed anything. And the same is true of this. So that's what we're going to do. I got 37 miles per 1 gallon and I'm going to multiply it times 1.61 kilometers per one mile and then I'm going to multiply it again times one gallon per 3.785 liters. Now the first thing I do is get rid of these measures that I'm trying to get rid of. My uh, uh, miles down there cancels out my miles up there. My gallons up here cancels out my gallons down there and on the top I'm left with 37 times 1.61 kilometers times 1, but that's not going to affect anything. So I got 37 times 1.61 kilometers. And on the bottom, I've got just a 1 there, so it doesn't do anything, times 1, so it doesn't do anything. But over here, I got 3.785 liters. So 3.785 liters. Now I got to multiply 37 times 1.61 and I get 59.57 kilometers per 3.785 liters. But I don't want this, I want a unit rate. I want to convert this to kilometers per a single unit. So I'm going to divide that by that and I end up with 15.74 kilometers per liter. Well, now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet, Converting Measures Between Systems. And when you finish that, go back and try the quiz on Converting Measures Between Systems.
See you again soon.